invite you to turn to your Bibles in Matthew chapter 24. to the buildings. What's the 
been an impressive sight to see, I'd imagine, the majesty of the temple area. You know, but Jesus really isn't impressed. Why should he be impressed? They're man-made structures. There's nothing that we can do that's going to make God go, whoa, nice work, guys. He made the whole operation. Right? He made the, the earth and the heavens. And, and there's nothing that we're going to do with this stuff that's going to make God say, wow, you guys are really cool. You know, it's just not going to happen that way. So Jesus isn't impressed. But see, he had, Jesus has his sight set on a kingdom that's being built by the hand of God. And if God can make all this stuff look as awesome as it does, he can't wait to see what the kingdom of God looks like. And he says to them, you see all these things? Do you really see all these things? Look around here, fellas. Look at all this stuff. I tell you, not one stone here is going to be left on another. All going to be thrown down. The whole thing's going down, boys. What do you think about that? And so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, the disciples will really get their reaction. They're like, what, what's he talking about? What, what's, what, what's this? I, there's probably some uncertainty there, but later on, Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives. And the disciples come out to him privately, and they say, hey, tell us when this is going to happen. What's going to be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Now, that, 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 that sounds like one question. There's actually three separate questions happening here. It sounds like one, but there's three. One, when will this happen? They want to know, okay, listen, if this building's going to get destroyed, you think, when's that going to happen? When the, when's the temple going to be destroyed? They want to know. Jesus just said that on one stone will be left on another, they want to know when. Jesus doesn't really tell them when. Tells them kind of what to look for. And it wasn't long after this, it was the year A.D. 70 when the temple was destroyed. This is probably right around A.D. 30, between 30 and 35. 30 some years later, the temple's going to get destroyed. And they need to know what to pay attention to. The second question is, what will be the sign of your coming? And the third question is, what about the end of the age? What's it going to look like when this happens? How are we supposed to know? This is when Jesus says, watch out. He says, watch out. This is one of the biggest times that he says, watch or watch out. Watch out that no one deceives you. And if you think about it, why would Jesus say that? Why would he say, watch out that no one deceives you? Because people are going to try to deceive you. This is how it goes. If there was no deception, Jesus wouldn't have said, watch out for deception. Guys, you've got to have your spiritual radar phoned in really good for this one. Otherwise, you're going to get duped. Other guys are going to come along claiming that they're me, that they're the Messiah, and they're going to, do, they're going to lead people astray. It happens. And you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars, but don't worry about that stuff. These things have to happen, then the end's going to come. And again, he's talking about the destruction of the temple. Nations are going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes. And this is just the beginning of birth pains. Anybody who's ever given birth would understand the beginning of birth pains. And then I, I don't know, and then there's more birth pains, and then eventually it's over. But, uh, but this stuff's going to get rough. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, natural disasters. Others are going to claim that they're the Messiah. And uh, unfortunately, they're going to fool people. But don't worry, guys. Don't worry about any of that stuff. There's other stuff you're going to have to worry about. Then he tells them, you're going to be handed over and be persecuted and put to death. And you'll be hated by all nations because of me. Now that's a real bummer. I, it probably wasn't easy for them to hear that. Keep in mind that Jesus is speaking directly to the disciples here. He's answering their questions. He's, he's not talking to us here. He's speaking directly to their question. What will happen to them? Well, they're going to be hated and persecuted. They're going to be handed over and they're going to get killed. And every single one of them was. Eventually. And then he goes on, at that time many will turn away from the faith, they'll betray and they'll hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. You know, when something, when, when it, well, I, don't, I don't know how true this expression is, but there's an expression that says, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. When the going gets tough, the weak look for an easy way out. Don't they? And so people are going to, as soon as it starts to get a little bit tough, the people that really aren't all in, they're going to fall away. And they're going to encourage you to try to fall away too. Hey, it's getting hard, guys. I don't really want to get persecuted. I didn't sign up for persecution. I signed up for, for fun and lots, lots of fun stuff with Jesus. And it's just like, then you signed up for persecution. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But it says, he who stands firm at the end will be saved. And this gospel of the king will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. But the end that Jesus is talking about is the end of the temple. The end of the age, because Jesus is bringing an end to one age and the beginning of another. 
and go to the next slide. Do you remember a slide that looks similar to that? The centerpiece of this is the cross. The slide illustrates it perfectly with eternity going in both directions. And if you're not sure from that matter standpoint, the eight on its side, that's the symbol for infinity. That means eternity stretches the whole way back because in the beginning, there was God. And in the end, there is God. There is no beginning or end. The cross is the center. The only place the age ends is at the cross. Everything hinges on the cross. Have I said that a few times over the years, not just today? But it, it's all about the cross. And if you can sing it, those through the hymn book one day. I, I do it all the time. And look at those how many hymns are about the cross. At the cross. Near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. That's good stuff. The old rugged cross. It's, it's, it's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. In this passage, Jesus says, watch out that no one deceives you. And that's what we're watching for. There was going to be a lot of deception in the days following Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. And it was important for the disciples to pay attention so they didn't get deceived. And uh, I said this before, and I'll probably say it some more. You know, the best way to, to not get deceived is to know what the truth is. Because they're going to keep inventing new ways to counterfeit things. It's hard to keep up with all the counterfeits. Not hard to keep up with the truth. Keep up with the truth, and when something comes along, you'll be like, that just doesn't pass the sniff test. Because it won't pass the sniff test. It'll stink to high heaven. And I'm not sure where that expression came from. But I don't think heaven stinks, but we'll take it. But we live in very similar times, and that there's still a lot of deception in the world. That's really not going to change. We aren't waiting for the temple to be destroyed anymore, nor are we waiting for the end of the age. We're waiting for Jesus to return. And no one knows when that will happen, so it's pointless to try to figure it out. We're called to claim the kingdom of God until he returns. And that's what we're going to do. And we'll do that in the midst of an awful lot of deception. There will always be deception in the world. It's what the world does to try to keep our eyes off Jesus. You know, I was uh, and back, back in, uh, when I was getting ready to finish seminary, I was looking for a church to go to. And I, and I, I, tried, I tried all kinds of different... I went, I barked up every possible tree, and a lot of there was a lot of places that said, "Yeah, hey, come, we'll take you." And it just didn't, it just it wasn't quite the right fit. And so, um, I found the right fit. I'm not sure what that means about me or you guys, but I don't know. <laughs> but I like the way it fits. But eventually, one guy said to me, "He said, listen, your calling is to proclaim the truth, and your calling is to proclaim the truth in the midst of a lie." He said, "If it wasn't for all the lies, we wouldn't have to claim the truth." Pick your lie. Pick which, which part of the lie you're going to go proclaim the truth to. And I'm like, huh. Now, I don't remember some stuff that happened yesterday. Somebody told me that almost 30 years ago, and I remember it. So it must have been a good piece of advice. And that's what we do. We watch out so we're not deceived. We proclaim the truth in the midst of a lie. Then, believe me, <laughs> the lies aren't going to stop. And you can, I used to chase all the lies and try to put, put all the fires out. You know, if you want to believe a lie, you are free to do that. We will proclaim the truth. But watch out because we never know when the Holy Spirit's going to move. Do it. We never know when the Holy Spirit's going to move. Again, that's why we pay attention. So we're not deceived. When the Holy Spirit moves, we need to be ready. And on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we kicked off the season of Lent, and I encourage us to watch and pray. And I had no idea what would happen the very next day. Because something happened the very next day. And not much usually happens between Wednesday and Sunday. Of course, I guess it has to happen. That's, that's about half the time. But, but not a whole lot happens on Wednesday. And I'm getting ready for Sunday. Thursday, getting ready for Sunday. Pretty much know how it's going to go. But something happened this week that changed. That, that, that changed. It was a good thing we were paying attention. We've been waiting for several years. It feels like an eternity, hasn't it? for the general conference to decide what's going to happen with our denomination, right? It feels like we've been waiting forever, doesn't it? Well, just when it looked like things might get settled this September, the general conference that was to be the most decisive moment in the history of our church was postponed again until 2024. Now, 2024 seems like it's at least 15 years away, doesn't it? <laughs> so, uh, and that was disappointing. But, but, won't leave you disappointed for long. Just as that was announced, Wesleyan Covenant Association, an organization that we are members of, had an announcement of their own. The WCA has been working diligently on a new denomination called the Global Methodist Church. If you haven't heard about it, you will. You just did. 
He was going to come forth in September. The United Methodist Church split apart or whatever was going to happen. And many of us have been following that very closely. I've been following it very, very closely. And we're indeed watching. And it's very good that we were because now that the General Conference isn't happening until 2024, the WCA announced that this local Methodist Church is going to kick off May 1st, 2022. That's less than two months from now. That made me leap out of my skin. I know John the Baptist felt when he was inside his mom. He leaped for joy in the world when he met Jesus. That kind of excited me. A new denomination is going to kick off in less than two months. And that's not a lot of time to figure things out. But fortunately, as I said, we've been watching and paying attention. I've been watching and praying. That's exactly why we watch and pray, because you never know, right, when the Holy Spirit's going to move. And just when it seems like, oh, this is going to stink. Boom! God does something it improves the smell. And so we need to be watching, keep watching, and we need to keep praying. And we're going to share communion this morning. And we'll do so with the same command Jesus gave his disciples time and time again. With the same thing we talked about on Wednesday. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Pay attention. And watch out that we're not deceived. The kingdom of God is moving. And we need to keep moving with it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, you're calling to watch. Lord, you, uh, you, you, you're telling us what to do. And we need to pay attention. Lord, we need, we need to know what you're, what you're telling us. We, uh, Lord, it's not, it's, uh, if we miss it, it's not because of you. We pray, Lord, your spirit would fill us. And Lord, show us your will. Show us your way. Lord, we pray for the eyes to see, the ears to hear. Lord, we want to watch. And we want to pray. And Lord, and we're going to move when you say move. And we pray that your spirit would fill us in your name. Amen.